Hello out there. It was a great draft. There were some crazy trades right before uh, the draft actually started. Um, probably by my mistake since uh, I kind of texted the wrong person and he decided to jump up. But thankfully he didn't take the person I wanted. Uh, instead he took Exigli Elliott and the German got two picks and he blew kind of like both of them. But we'll get into that a lot later. As always... <clears throat> this is the ninth edition of the sure to miss lock tier system. Hey, that doesn't look sound right. What about the inevitably wrong but always correct tiers? You know what? I like that one better. Let's do that. In inevitably wrong but always correct tiers. That sounds good. Last year, the two tiers that were assured playoffs, both didn't make the playoffs. One of the teams that was at the very bottom won the whole thing. It was an up and down crazy year. I don't think a lot of the logic that I used was uh, incorrect. However, you know, you can't be right 100% of the time. Plus, you know, trades, pickups, you just never know. But anyhow, first of all, let's get to the top tier. There's two teams in the top tier. Because of last year, I will not be guaranteeing playoffs. However, these team, two teams have the best shot at making the playoffs. As we all know, someone could go the first four weeks, be in the top three score, but lose to the top or second score every single week. But that's just fantasy football. That kind of stuff happens. Um, either way, before we move on, one more thing. I still wanted to congratulate the German for winning last year. And d -Row, um, and both of you combined for, honestly, one of the best championship matches I've ever seen um, in fantasy. have been doing it, you know, before they, they had it on computers. So um, it, w it was amazing. Just, uh, I think everybody was already congratulating d -Row, including the German and... Uh, he, he pulled an upset to remember, so congrats on that. Um, definitely like a 180 from uh, the championship about like five years ago um, when Hugo won and like the weak scores were like 80 to 70 and then 70 to 76. It, it was uh, two teams that really didn't deserve it, but they won it and uh, this year proved otherwise. Anyhow, tier one. Um, in my view, the top tier, and I, I think it would be hard to argue, um, is, is Fraggle Wembley. It's me. Let, let's be honest. Um, if you look up and down, if you go by 2015 and looking ahead, I get it. It's not 2015. Um, but either way, he doesn't have a player in his starting positions that's outside of top 20 of their position. In fact, all but two are in top 10 and all but four are top five. That's pretty huge when you have the number two receiver of last year and there still should be top uh, two next year in Antonio Brown and Julio Jones. Antonio Brown coming via the trade with the German. Um, hopefully it pays off for both of us, him last year, me this year. Um, and Julio Jones, which uh, I, I don't see going anywhere, especially in that South with weak uh, defenses. Um, David Johnson, who was the number seven running back last year and should always move up. Yes, German. David Johnson is a player in the NFL. Apparently, the German didn't even know who DJ was. Um, ben Roethlisberger and Dake, Derek Carr will be switching back and forth as his starter, um, depending on matchups, which is really perplexing me this week. I, I just don't know. I, I love Derek Carr and going against New Orleans um, should be great, but you know, Big Ben against Washington also should be pretty great. Um, so that's going to be a last minute decision for me. However, David Johnson, LaShawn McCoy, who should be upping his carries this year and definitely have a better year. He was 16th last year, which is a solid RB2. Um, this year, I, I fully expect him to get in the top 15. Again, very solid um, RB2. His flex going forward is A.J. Green. 
Um, A.J. Green was a top 10 receiver. He was number 8 last year. Again, not the greatest uh, pass defenses in his division. Plus, you know he's the main target. And not only that, he's the red zone target on a very pass-happy team. Um, on top, he did upgrade his biggest weakness from last year and got a tight end outside of Gronk. I, I do believe that Greg Olson is the best tight end um, with the highest upside. It's going to definitely open him up a little bit more in the middle now that Kelvin Benjamin's coming. Speaking of Kelvin Benjamin, I do have Kelvin Benjamin on my bench. Um, they're saying that his workload's going to be a little less than what it was the rookie year. Um, but if he puts up around rookie year numbers, I'm going to be very, very happy. Um, Plus, very, very young talent, so I definitely feel comfortable with him stepping in, and uh, he's not going to see that much playing time with those core receivers in there, um, but when he does need to step in, I, I think it's a it's a very, very good, viable option. Outside of that, Arian Foster just got named the starter in Miami. That's a huge swing from where he, got, he picked up Arian Foster. Last year, Arian was 61. Little bit of flashes of uh, Arian Foster of old. If he stays healthy, that could be really a big steal of the draft. Uh, Tavon Austin, you get some, you get some uh, touchdown points from his returns. Plus, he's a solid deep threat receiver. He's not going to see much playing time, but he's a good flyer. Um, Derek Carr, like I said, is QB. Uh, Travis Benjamin from San Diego. Again, not going to see much uh, playing time. And then his last receiver, James Starks from Green Bay. Lacey's good, um, but we all know how Green Bay feels about him. Expect uh, Starks carries to get more and more throughout the year. Either way, you guys can disagree, but I feel that you would be completely wrong. Uh, if you look up and down the lineup, there there's really no team on paper that touches Wembley. Um, we'll see how it goes, but uh, right now I definitely think I would be the favorite of taking home the belt for the third time. Second tier... Or, I'm sorry, first tier, second one. This one was iffy. It was between two teams. I gave the nod to Truffle Butter. Again, for the second year in a row, I know I was painfully wrong. However, with how many injuries he's had last year, I don't feel like I can be completely blamed. You can't foresee that. Um, but he comes back with another strong team. The, the thing that makes him not on the same level as Wembley is two of his players are suspended for the first four games. That's a quarter of the season, meaning their value goes a lot lower. Um, and his fill-ins on the bench aren't nearly as strong um, to cover that for the four weeks. And we all know 0-4 or 1-3 um, can be a really incredibly hard hole to uh, dig out of. Anyhow, um, quarterback, he has Russell Wilson, who was the number three quarterback last year. I expect him to be about the same. Seattle's definitely going to a more pass-happy offense, which will give Russell Wilson more and more opportunities to score some points. Um, running back, Todd Gurley, if not the number one, if I was if I was picking in a league that it was only one season, I wouldn't pick Todd Gurley. In a keeper league or a dynasty league, Todd Gurley is would be my first pick. Um, He's, he's, a, he's a back that gets 90% of the carries. You just don't see that in the NFL very often. Um, definitely going to be his workhorse. Then he's got Le'Veon Bell. Again, like I said, suspended. He's going to be probably filling him in with Danny Woodhead. Woodhead will get you something, but he's going to be incredibly inconsistent. Hopefully he'll be consistent for the first four weeks for Truffle Butter. Uh, flex spot, Jamal Charles. we got some bad news about Jamal Charles. With uh, we, we, They think that they're going to cut his carries a big amount in the upcoming uh, season. We'll see if that holds true. If it does, you might be a little bit of trouble as his bench is a little bit thin and a little bit too many flyers as his first bench player that he picked was Josh Gordon, who again is suspended, um, but he doesn't really have the luxury to wait around, so that was a very surprise pick for me. Um, receivers, this is the steal that he got was Allen Robinson. Um, he's, a top, he's a top two round talent. He's a top... 10 receiver. He was number five, in fact, last year. And with that offense starting to mold and mold and mold and gel even more, I expect that not go nowhere but up. 
Um, second is Javar, uh, Jarvis Landry. Jarvis Landry, not as sexy as some of the other receivers, but he gets it done. He gets a lot of touches. If we switch to a PPR next year, Jarvis Landry is a very, very strong candidate. Um, tight end, he's got Colby Fleener in that um, offense in the, with the Saints. I think that he's going to improve from last year where he was just teetering around that number 20 spot in tight ends, which is not a, a startable tight end. Look for him to climb back up into that uh, tight end number one spot this year. Um, bench, Gordon, Woodhead, like I've already mentioned. Kevin White, Amir Abdullah, Martellus Bennett. I think that Bennett is going to end up being his starter by the end of the year. If we think about Hernandez back on the Patriots in their two tight end system, they really love two pass catching tight ends. I think he's going to be huge. He will he score as much as Gronk? No. But they've had two t- uh, top five tight ends before in a, in a year, and I think they're going to have it again this year with Bennett and Gronk. Look for it, especially everybody thinks because uh, Brady's out for the ne- first four weeks. That might not happen. But young quarterbacks love those security blankets. And the number one strong safety or linebacker is going to be matched up with Gronk, meaning Martellus Bennett and his Freakish athletic, uh, his freakish athleticism is really going to show out, um, and he's going to benefit just like Aaron Hernandez did having Gronk on the other side. They don't really have a number one receiver. Um, Edelman's great, but he's still a slot receiver playing uh, their number one. So Bennett, I definitely think going forward, should be a starter until Fleener shows something different. Um, either way, those are my top two teams. Love them, hate them, disagree, agree, let me know. But you know, you'd be wrong and I would be right. Stay tuned. We got the middle top tier coming up.